The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus released today on the Nintendo Switch, and I wanted to put together a guide to help new players get started on what I consider to be one of the best games of the past decade. I've got a few thousand hours in the game, and I wanted to share some of my knowledge of Isaac to help any new players picking up the game for the first time. For full disclosure, this guide is being recorded on PS4 as I wasn't able to get my hands on an early copy of the Switch version, but all of the mechanics and tips that I explain in this video will be exactly the same regardless of the console. My name is Cody and welcome to Split Screen. In this guide, I'm going to be covering three major things to help you guys get started. The first thing is basic floor layout and secrets. The second thing is what each stat actually represents. And finally, we're going to talk about how to unlock the absolute best character for beginners to the game. If there's a particular thing that you want to see, the timestamp of that part of the guide will be on screen now, so you guys can go straight to that point of the video and, and not have to watch the other stuff. Anyways, let's get started. Your basic floor is essentially going to follow the same formula every time. You'll have rooms with enemies in them, you'll have a treasure room that contains an item. Now this treasure room is always going to be unlocked on the first floor of a run, but it requires a key on every subsequent floor. So make sure you at least have one key as you move forward down the, down the floors. The floor is also going to have two secret rooms, a shop, and a boss room. In addition to these, you can sometimes find curse rooms, which have spikes on the door, and they damage you upon entry and exit, taking one half red heart each time. But if you have the extra health, these can definitely be worth checking out, because you can find useful items and other neat stuff. You can occasionally find challenge rooms, or rooms with swords on the door. Now these have chests inside. And if you take the chest and you open it, then you have to survive waves of enemies until you defeat them all, at which point the door will reopen. You're going to make your character more powerful as you go on by picking up an item in the treasure room and then moving on to kill the boss and get the item from defeating the boss. Now let's talk about accessing the secret rooms. Getting into these is a matter of finding where they are and placing a bomb at the entrance. If you see two rooms on the map separated by a gap, there's a pretty good chance that a secret room may be located there. Just drop a bomb where a door would be in the room layout, and surprise, you found a secret room. The second secret room, which is known as the super secret room, it's typically more difficult to find, and it's usually just attached to one adjacent other room, but if you have bombs to spare, and you're not really doing anything with them, you can search around and you can typically find this room also. And these super secret rooms do have some really unique pickups and, and items in them, so definitely look for them when you can. Now, floors will also occasionally have what is known as tinted rocks. These are rocks that look slightly different in color than the other rocks. You can blow these up with bombs and you'll get these blue hearts called spirit hearts which will give you more health until you lose them by taking damage so they aren't actually a permanent upgrade to your health. Or you can get dark hearts, which they work pretty much the same way as spirit hearts, but they damage enemies when you lose them. Uh, you can find other useful items inside uh, tinted rocks. You can get pennies, which are currency to buy things in the shop. You can get keys, you can get bombs from using bombs, you know what I mean? So. Uh, if you see a tinted rock and you've got a bomb, definitely blow that thing up. Now this layout, as far as a treasure room and a boss room and all of that, applies to every single floor until you get to the womb. But on your first run, if you haven't defeated mom yet, you're not going to have access to the womb anyways. But once you do get access to the womb, uh, at this point floors will no longer contain the treasure room. Uh, so let's move on from that. Now talking about shops. Shops start out by selling two different items. They'll sometimes have three, but mostly two different items. But they have a donation machine inside of them. And what that is, if you have pennies to spare, the little gold coins that you've picked up, you can put these in the donation box. And after you've made enough donations over a, a cumulative set of runs, 
you will eventually unlock more items inside the shop. So the vendor will go on from having two items to three, three items to four, and eventually you can upgrade this all the way to where the, the shopkeeper always has six items inside the shop. It's super useful to do, so if you guys have pennies to spare, definitely throw those in the donation box. Now let's move on to your stats. You can see these by bringing up the pause menu. This is the section that has the, the stat icon on it as well as the seed for the current run and it shows your items that you currently have. Now, real quick before I get into this, let's talk about the seed. The seed code can be given to your friends or you can write it down and use it for a seeded run, which means that all of the item placement and everything will be identical uh, every time you do that run. So if you found a run that was really overpowered and you got pretty far on it and you want to try again because you maybe made some mistakes, then take note of that seed and you can restart that run directly. All right, so stats. The boot represents how fast you move. The three arrows represent your rate of fire. The sword represents how much damage you do. The bow represents how far your shots actually travel before they land. The tier icon represents how fast your tiers travel through the play space. And finally, the clover represents how lucky you are. Luck has a lot of influence in this game in terms of drops and how certain items work. So overall, you, you want to kind of keep an eye on these stats to you know determine what kind of run you're actually having. Items won't always directly influence the stat. So for example, if you pick up a damage up item, your damage may not noticeably go up on the stat screen, but these do stack. So over time, if you get a couple of different damage items, you will start to see an increase in the damage of your character. And finally, let's talk about Devil Deals and how you use those to unlock the best character for beginners in the game, Azazel. Uh, even if you've got Azazel unlocked, I'm going to give you guys some information on how to uh, guarantee a Devil Door spawns. So it, this section will still be useful for you regardless. So let's say that you've managed to get a feel for the game, but you're still having trouble progressing. Well, Azazel could be the answer to help you guys get farther and make you feel more comfortable with enemies and their attacks. Azazel can fly, and he has a really powerful Tear Blast that's a short-range version of an item known as Brimstone. Now, to unlock him, you need to make three deals with the Devil in one run. There are a few different ways that you can get the Devil Room to spawn, but the way I'm going to teach you guys is a surefire way to pretty much finish a floor and get a Devil Door. So the way you do this is, you go through an entire floor, uh, basement to and on, so you can't do this on the first floor, but you can do it on every floor after that. You have to finish the floor and defeat the boss without taking any red heart damage. Now this is easier than it sounds. You can obviously just try to dodge the enemies and make it through the floor without taking a hit, but the easier thing to do is try to get your hands on some spirit hearts or some dark hearts on the very first floor and try to sort of carry those into the second floor and at that point you can lose those spirit hearts and you can lose those dark hearts during the floor and even in the boss fight and as long as you don't take any red heart damage you should get a devil door to spawn uh, I believe you get a 99% chance to get a devil door to spawn if you didn't take any red heart damage on the floor or in the boss and I'm pretty sure the game gives you a 1% chance of a Devil Door anyways, and that's why this method is the easiest way to spawn a Devil Door. But anyways, once you make it through the floor and you don't take any, any red heart damage and you beat the boss, you're going to see a black door spawn on one of the sides. Uh, just go through there and there's going to be a Devil Statue. He's going to have a few different items in there that you can trade your health for. Now, these items are incredibly powerful, some of the best items in the game. And the thing is, is you may not have the health necessarily to trade for all of these. He may have all three in the first room, and they may just be one heart apiece. Uh, some of these items can give you dark hearts in exchange also as, as one of their sort of perks. But, you know, don't worry if you're not able to get all three devil deals in the first devil room. Just make your way on down the floors, try to get another devil room, try to get yourself set up on health, to where you can make three of these deals in one run, and then boom, you're done. You've got Azazel, he can fly, he starts with three dark hearts, 
His health is upgradable as well, and he shoots a short-range version of Brimstone. It's pretty much easy mode once you start to feel comfortable with that character. Anyways, this was a very basic guide to help get new players started on the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. If you guys would like to see some more advanced guides on the game, whether it be how to get to the secret bosses, uh, just boss guides in general, or any sort of item guides or things like that, you know, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to bring those to you as quickly as possible. Or if you have any general questions about the game, hit me up and, and I'll do my best to answer those also. But I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please be sure to leave a like on it. And if you want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe. You can also follow us on Twitter at Split Screen, or you can hit us up in the comments below. My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for watching Split Screen. We'll see you next time.